Hey, it's Dave. Out here at the property. And uh, gonna do something a little bit different. Got my bum shoulder and stuff. So I've been thinking about back uh, about a year ago. This actually, I think, ended about a year ago this time. I um, worked on uh, building a bridge over a creek. And so I cover that in four or five of my vlogs, you know, the process I went through. But I always wanted to condense it down just to make one video that anybody could go to and get a quick reference of the process I went through to make a bridge over a creek and how one guy can do this, you know. And look, I'm a one-eyed old fat guy and I got it done. So anyways, here's my, uh, here's my process and it kind of starts with, uh, with a dilemma. So let's, uh, let's turn and, and look at the dilemma. So there's a creek that uh, separated the uh, property from um, and limited my access. So uh, I was stuck. I couldn't cross to the second half of the property. The creek was not overly wide, but it definitely was deep enough. It, you know, it probably is about two to three feet deep, but um, in some places um, narrower than others, but uh, the span was enough where you couldn't drive, I couldn't drive my UTV through it, or maybe I could a couple of times, but fording it just really didn't seem to be an option. So um, I knew I had to have a plan. And so the plan I came up with was, uh, well, let's make a bridge. And so I knew I um, also had some materials because um, I'd been clearing for a food plot and so I had logs. And so the, I figured the oak logs I had would make good beans. Then I had to figure out, you know, what's a good strategy for a bridge. And I settled on a, on a strategy that, uh, fairly common, but uh, basically it, uh, my bridge um, would entail uh, two sleepers and then beams. Beams lay across the sleeper. Sleepers on one side of the creek and then a sleeper on the other side. And then you secure your beams to it and then across the beams you put your planking. And so that in my mind was a simple construction. So I went down and measured the spot where the trail hit the creek and there was a shorter spot that uh, seemed the best place and in that it measured about six feet was the distance that you had to span, that I needed to span. And so um, I knew that six feet, if I just had a beam six feet, that wouldn't be enough. I needed to have um, enough extra um, length on each end. So I chose 12 feet. Minimum of a beam would be 12 feet. And, um, and I also knew that the, you know, I, you know, what was the weight that I'd have to carry so I looked at it and, um, you know, I have my UTV and I think it weighs roughly six to 800 pounds, depending on what you're carrying on it. Have a, now an ATV, I knew it'd be getting an ATV, there's about 600 pounds, but the heaviest thing probably would ever be would be a small tractor. And, you know, maybe that's 2000 pounds, um, maybe a little more. So I looked on the internet, of course, the internet's always right. And a six by six, 12 feet long can support around 2,000 pounds. So I figured, well, I got this, I got this lick. I can, I can put together four beams and uh, we can span uh, this with 12 feet uh, in length. And so that came together pretty easily, I thought, in my mind for the plan. The, um, the uh, other thing I had to do though was, um, was figure out what kind of planking to use. And so I figured, um, you know, went to the lumber store to see what was available. And of course, um, at that time, no decking. You, you couldn't find any kind of decking. And if you did, it was super expensive. So, but remarkably, two by sixes were plentiful and fairly affordable. So that's what I settled on. Um, I knew my width because of the width of the UTV was 48 inches. And I figured I could get an ATV, not much, wider than that and 48 inches seemed to be a good width and so I said all right if I use that how much extra do I need on each side so I set on five feet so that'll be the width so four beams planks five feet long and so I figured um, I didn't know how many planks I needed but um, so roughly I calculated that I need around 14 and so that's what I got ended up using only 12 but anyway that's further on down all right so in my mind, I've got my plan. I need um, four beams, 12 feet long, a couple sleepers, and I figured the sleepers needed to be um, 
uh, wider than the planking. So I figured at least six feet. And if it's a little wider, that's fine. And then um, the planking, which, you know, I got, and then the, you know, the screws and the bolts and such to secure it all. And so there you go. That was my plan. And, um, and, uh, and now I'm off and ready. So um, once I have my plan, then the next thing is gathering my materials. All right, so getting and buying the two by sixes was easy, um, as was the hardware. I could, although I had to go to a couple stores to get the right kind of screws, but I finally got them. And so then that left the next part, which was preparing my beam. Starts right here at my wood lot. So you can see the beams I have available right now, logs, future beams. And then I've got one set up on my wood lot, ready to, ready to be worked. And so I had several things to do to get this ready so I can make my beams. First, I had to make the supports. So that all happened last year as part of it. And then I had, I had the beams. And so um, I chose out of the pile the right kind, the right size. So I knew if I was settling on a six by six, if I didn't need um, beams that were, um, you know, too wide. So I chose logs that had a diameter of no greater than 12 inches. Um, 12 inches seemed to be uh, pretty good. It uh, allowed me to use my uh, beam cutter. And so, um, so the first thing I do when I get my log, I got to get it up on the rest. And when I do, then I measured it and got it, uh, positioned and, and trimmed down so it was around 12 feet in length. Um, you know, off a little bit. I would cut them in between uh, 12 and 13 feet. I always wanted a little extra because you just never know. Then the next thing was using a beam cutter and the beam cutter rides on these two by fours. These are upside down, but if you flipped it over, you'd put, the, put it over the log and the beam cutter just moves and you can see a action of that right now. Um, the beam cutter secures itself to the, you secure it to your chainsaw, and then it just rides on the two by four and gives you a straight cut. So you're cutting, you know, um, one side and then the other. And the way I did it, chose to do it was, um, I didn't care about the um, two of the sides. There was no need to trim them down. I only needed two sides flat. And so that's what I did for each of the beams. So um, once I got each of the beams cut, then um, uh, trimmed down and ready. So then the next step was to um, turn them on edge and then peel the logs. So then you want to peel all the bark off the logs. And so, um, and the reason you do that is because bark invites insects and rotten decay. So get the bark off, then you can easily put uh, some kind of stain or uh, preservative on it. And we'll talk about what I used. So that's the next thing that happened. And so um, once I got the logs all peeled, then um, then we're off to the next process. And so um, hold on a minute and we'll go there. Dave out. All right, so for moving the logs, and, uh, and you'll see in a video that I've got, um, it shows I use the UTV. So the UTV right now is broken down um, uh, mechanically it functions. It just, um, I broke the windshield out, one of the headlights. And so I got it sitting there until I get some parts for it. I need to work on the front suspension and, uh, replace some parts there. So I got to do all that. But anyways, it was what I had available and it's what I used to move the logs. And so what I did was secure onto, um, the, a travel rack, which is, Nothing more than one of those racks you put on the end of a pickup truck, you know, to carry extra luggage and stuff. And so I put that on the end of the UTV and then I strapped the log down to it. Now, today, I'd move them with log arch and my ATV. But when I did this a year ago, I didn't have the ATV or the log arch. I could use the log arch and the UTV. It would have worked fine. I didn't have the log arch which I wish I did because it makes moving logs and beams so much easier. But anyways, I did what I did and I got them all down to the creek. Um, I got them as far as I could with the UTV um, and then the last 20, 30 yards, I carried them by myself. Um, I, what I did was I'd secure a chain to one end 
and the chain allows me to get some leverage and I'd pick them up and just drag them and I drag them all, all the pieces down to the creek. So um, now I have everything at the creek and so um, we're ready to par start putting things in place. All right, Dave out. All right, so the next thing I had to do was set my sleepers. And so the key thing about putting the sleepers in is one, they need to be level um, across. So one side can't be too much higher or lower than the other, unless you want your bridge to have an incline or a decline. So um, you got to put some kind of board across and put a level to the two sleepers to make sure they kind of balance each other. Um, the other thing they have to do is lengthwise, they got to be level. And so what I did was um, I put a board across the creek and tried to find two places in the creek where I knew the span would be somewhat level and give me a good start at it. So I set my first sleeper into the ground. You dig uh, like a little pit for it. You put it, place it in the ground and then you um, leave it loose and then go across the creek and do the same. Um, and then start putting the levels to it. So first I would level it um, lengthwise on both sides and then I laid a span across it and would work on leveling it um, incline or decline. And um, it's just a matter of either you take away dirt on one side or add dirt on the other side, whatever you feel more comfortable with. For me, I was fortunate. I didn't have a lot. I had one side I had to remove some dirt from to get it level, but in the end, they're fairly level. I mean, it's not 100% perfect, but if you throw a level on it, it's gonna be within the bubbles. And so that's what I was looking for on incline or decline. And lengthwise, I try to get it pretty, pretty good um, level. It just makes setting the beams easier. All right, so um, once you're comfortable with the level, then I um, backfill it and, pan and tamp the dirt down around the sleepers. Um, the dirt down there is all clay. It'll secure those um, sleepers in nice and hard. The good thing about Tennessee dirt is it's clay. And so clay um, just uh, becomes like, I don't know, super hard on uh, whatever you set into it, especially after it's rained, dried, rained and dried. It just does a great job. So anyways, um, got my sleeper set, then another hard chore um, so up next um, is uh, we got to move those beams across. All right, Dave out. Got to move those beams across the creek. And so it's just, I had no other way to do it um, than uh, manuel. And so um, you, I did have a come along and I could have used that. I could have used some kind of block and tackle set up um, with a winch. Um, and I did have a winch for, you know, picking up deer and stuff. But I knew from moving the logs, the beams down to the creek by hand with chain that I could lift each one up um, and move it across. And so I hook a chain onto the end of the, each of the beams and I just um, ferry it over to the other side. The um, uh, sleepers help because if you start your beam on the sleeper and just slide it over, it gives it, uh, you're not fighting the dirt as much. And so that's what I did. Once I got one beam in place, I used I would use it as leverage to help um, the other one slide over. And uh, I put the two biggest beams on the outside and the two smaller beams on the inside. Now all of them um, have a um, thickness of about six and a half inches. And the width varies depending upon the board. So a couple of the beams are like 12 inches wide and a couple of the beams are only like eight inches wide, but they're all at least six and a half inches thick. And so I placed the two on the out, two in the middle that are smaller. And, uh, and once I got them in place, then, um, then I, you know, you gotta secure them in uh, with some kind of uh, fastener. I chose to use um, leg bolts. Now the oak I used wasn't kiln dry. So it had a little, it was a little wet yet, um, probably more wet than what you'd want, but I knew it'd be okay. So it was a chore um, getting those bolts in. I broke off a couple drill bits. Um, I uh, had to, um, I twisted the heads off of a couple of the bolts going in, so that gave some issues. But in the end, I was able to get each one secured and it took more time than 
what I thought. What I thought was going to be an easy job of just securing the bolts and end up being a little bit harder because oak is a little bit harder to get through than I anticipated. So anyways, got it done and got them secured. So um, that leads to the next step. All right, Dave out. All right, so the next thing I had to do was uh, secure those uh, or uh, trim, uh, get ready to put the decking on. So I have the logs across the beams, they're secured. And so now I take a chainsaw and I cut each of the end, end piece of the, each of the beams so that it um, has a slight angle to it. Try to get to about a 45, but just some kind of angle so that it um, allows when I need to bridge, build the bridge up, the ground up to meet the bridge because right now it's standing proud about um, six seven inches of the ground when i build the dirt up to that i want i don't want a blunt stump there i want an incline and so i cut each of those then um time to put my decking on which of the all the things on the um bridge is probably most enjoyable and quickest thing um, i laid the planks down i had them all pre-cut it was easy to cut because they're i took a 10 foot two by six and cut it in half. Um, yeah, I get that they may be off just a little bit because sometimes they're a little proud of 10 feet, but it didn't matter. Um, it all looked good in the end. So, um, so anyways, I get the boards down and, um, and run across and the bridge structurally is pretty well set. There's only a couple more steps left. And so um, I, uh, I take that moment um, to give it a test and so the UTV goes up on the bridge and um, sure enough it it doesn't budge at all it's uh, rock solid so I know um, I know we've you know got a successful bridge all right leads me to my final two uh, things I got to get done all right Dave out all right this is Dave again so last two things to finish up this bridge are um, it's got to I got to get the dirt mounted up around it so that the exit on and off the bridge isn't, you know, you're not running the tires into a blunt end of a bridge. Um, like I said, it's sitting proud about six, six, seven inches. Well, now it's probably about eight inches because the planking's on it. So um, the only thing that's been buried in the ground were the sleepers. So everything's sitting proud on top of it. So I, uh, you know, I do the old fashioned way. I get a bucket and a shovel and I, you know, fill up the bucket with dirt and dump it at the end of the bridge and that's how I make my uh, dirt ramps. And, um, and then the, um, in between, um, I put stain on. So I have a whole video out there about how I did, developed the, the stain. It's nothing that I come up with. It's just an old timey recipe where you use diesel fuel and, um, and, and uh, uh, old motor oil. And so a mixture 50-50 and I stain it. I put uh, one coat on prior to putting the dirt mounds on and one coat after. And so right now it's sitting with uh, two coats on. I put it on heavy and it soaks it up pretty good, but um, it seems to do well when it rains. Um, it does seem to uh, uh, repel the water and I know bugs won't get in it because they don't like the oil. So um, anyways, uh, there you go. I've got a, a really good functioning uh, bridge that I've made myself out of uh, mostly the materials I, you know, um, had been scrapped or um, that I found on the property. And so the only thing I bought were the two by sixes and um, I didn't have any way to make planks like I do now. If, um, if I had the uh, um, uh, chainsaw mill like I do now, I probably would have cut my own planks, but I didn't then. So anyways, um, there you go. That's my bridge. And so let me finish this, uh, close this video out um, with like, uh, with the words I always seem to share. A um, couple things. One, thanks for watching. I know it encompasses stuff that's already happened, but now it's condensed into one short video, short or video. You don't have to go through the whole playlist to see it. Um, so I appreciate you hanging out and watching. And then, um, like I say, make kindness your business. Share some kindness today. Um, help somebody out who's in need, um, just do something nice. And uh, it's amazing what effect uh, one little act of kindness can have. All right, so like, uh, uh, like I like to end my videos with the big Dave out, and thanks again. Dave out.